Armando Hasurungan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook, Armando Hasurungan, please like. And here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including artworks. And you can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. Um, in the previous video, the part one, we talked about the immune cells and how they ar arose, arise from the bone marrow, specifically from the cells in the bone marrow known as the pluripotent stem cells. And these uh, pluripotent stem cells, they divide into different and are, give rise to different types of cells, different types of leukocytes. And then these leukocytes, um, they, can, they can be immature precursors uh, leukocytes, which when they leave the bone marrow, they will migrate to different destinations, uh, different areas, different tissues, such as the T-cell precursor will go to the thymus for maturation. The immature B-cell will migrate to the lymph nodes to become activated later on. Um, and also we have the granulocytes, such as the basophils and eosinophils, which will circulate around the bloodstream and may migrate to specific tissues and different circumstances. Now in this video, what we will look at is we will look at some other organs which are important in the immune system and also which are part of the lymphatic system, such as the liver, which produces complement proteins and other substances which are important for the inflammatory process. And then we'll look at a typical tissue, such as a tissue beneath our skin, for example, and how some of these cells will migrate into this tissue. Um, specifically, um, the innate immune cells, because they're the first uh, line of defense in the immune system, you can say. And we'll see how they migrate into the tissues. And remember that this is not exactly what happens in our body. This is just an overall picture uh, for you, hopefully, to get a better understanding of how these immune cells and the immune system uh, works together. Okay, now let's go back to the big immunology map and we learned and we saw how the pluripotent stem cells gave rise to all these different cells and now they're in the bloodstream. Some are immature, some are precursors and some will just circulate, some are, such as the granulocytes. We will actually mainly concentrate on this cell here, the lymphoid precursor cell and follow it into the thymus. That's our main goal. But we will also learn about all the associated organs uh, which we will pass. So the, the bloodstream continues on, bringing these cells to different areas. We see the liver. The liver is an important organ in the immune system. It secretes many substances. A very important substance it secretes in an inactive form is the complement proteins. The complement proteins, which we'll soon learn in the next video or whatnot, are important in the innate immune system to prevent invasion and to promote destruction of the pathogen. Okay. There's so circulating around, we have all those different leukocytes. Let's look at a monocyte, which is circulating around. Now, when it enters a tissue, it, it binds to receptors on the surface of epithelial cells where it will successfully migrate. And when it migrates into a tissue, it will become a macrophage. I designated with an M, with an O, and a dash. That's an easy abbreviation for a macrophage. And the process of migration for all cells, including the monocyte, is a process known as diapodesis. So it's the process of migration. And to learn more about diapodesis, I have a video, and I'll provide a link here. So you can click on it if you want to learn more about diapodesis. The mast cell precursor will also enter the tissues through the process of diapodesis. The mast cell precursor, which originated from the bone marrow, when it migrates into a tissue, it will become a mast cell. And mast cells typically are situated within tissues, such as underneath the, the tissues underneath our skin. And they will stay there. Uh, as an innate immune cell. So in the tissues, we can find different, different cells. We can find uh, tissue macrophages, which migrated. We can also find immature dendritic cells, which migrated. And they're still immature because they have not been activated, right? They are not activated because there's no invasion from a pathogen. Now, continuing on, if we follow the blood vessel and the tissues above it, we can see uh, many other types of things. We see erythrocytes and complement proteins circulating in the bloodstream and all other types of leukocytes such as this natural killer cell. And in the tissue uh, above we can see 
uh, tissue dendritic cells and tissue macrophage, which are not activated yet, but are situated there as a defense mechanism, right? And also we have this green looking thing. This is the lymphatic vessel or the lymph vessel, which is part of the lymphatic system. The lymph vessel has a critical role in the immune system in that it, tr it actually transports um, activated T cells and B cells around the body. But in an immature uh, B cell form, this immature B cell, for example, it will circulate in the blood vessel and will go to the lymph node first for activation. Similarly, the lymphoid precursor will float through the blood vessel and will go into the thymus to become different types of leukocytes, particularly T cells. And then circulating around the bloodstream, we also have basophils, neutrophils, and eosinophils, which are the granulocytes, and they will just circulate around. So continuing, continuing on, these red blood cells, the inactive complement proteins, and the different types of leukocytes will keep circulating around the bloodstream. And some leukocytes will uh, migrate to specific destinations, such as above here, we have a lymph node. This is a lymph node. And here is a bloodstream. And the immature B cell will migrate into the lymph node through the lymph node artery. And I did mention that the immature B cell will become activated once it migrates to the lymph node. This is true, except it has to wait for a signal to become activated within the lymph node. So for now, it's still an immature B cell in the lymph node. And we'll get back to it later on. But for now, let's continue on with the bloodstream and proceed to the thymus. And this is the thymus. Um, and the cells that will migrate into the thymus are cells such as monocytes, which will become a uh, thymus macrophage. And also, most importantly, the lymphoid precursor cell will migrate into the thymus, as well as the immature dendritic cell. And cells entering the thymus through the bloodstream will enter the thymus through the thymic artery. And remember, the granulocytes are still circulating the bloodstream, such as the neutrophil and eosinophil. And so we finish there, and that concludes this video on the immune, overall immune system sort of thing. And in the next video, we'll look at the lymphoid precursor cell and how it matures to become uh, two types of T cells, CD4 and CD8.